Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 142 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the triple blind stick and swap technique, which we will explain in detail in the subsequent slides. The patient was an elderly man with multiple comorbidities, including ischemic cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 30% and chronic kidney disease on dialysis, who presented with hypotension and syncope, was found to have ischemia in the apex, apical anteroceptal and apical inferior wall, and then was found on angiogram to have LADCTO as well as CERCCTO without a significant disease in the right coronary artery. Coronary angiography showed severe calcification, which is typical of dialysis patient. The proximal cap was tapered and well-defined. The CTO length was approximately 10 millimeters, and the distal vessel was poorly visualized through bridging collaterals. There were no contralateral collaterals from the right coronary artery. Based on the lack of interventional collaterals, the plan was to start with undergrade wire escalation, followed by undergrade dissection reentry. An 8 French 375 EBU guide was used, and undergrade wire escalation was performed with Pilot 200, Field XT, and Gaia Second, but it was unsuccessful and the wire actually entered the subintimal plane. We decided to proceed with undergrade dissection reentry. We knuckled a Fielder XT guide wire and then were able to deliver a Stingray balloon, followed by attempting re-entry using the so-called double blind stick and swap technique. What this means is that the guide wire, is, um, which is a stiff penetrating guide wire, guy second in our case, it is advanced through both exit ports of the Stingray balloon, followed by sensor insertion of a polymer jacketed wire, usually a Pilot 200, uh, that um, uh, can follow the track into the distal true lumen. But unfortunately, in this particular case, despite um, puncturing both and then using the Pilot 200, the Pilot 200 seemed to follow a course that was not consistent with the anticipated course of the left anterior descending artery. We therefore changed the re-entry zone in what is called the bobsled technique, which simply means that the Stingray balloon is advanced to a different location in the coronary artery. We then repeated the double blind stick and swap technique. This is the uh, stiff wire exiting proximal to the proximal marker of the Stingray balloon. And then the wire was pulled back and redirected. And then the wire exited in between the two markers of the Stingray balloon, which is shown here. The stiff wire was then replaced for a Pilot 200 polymer jacketed which, um, to our pleasant surprise, very easily uh, went between the two markers, in the exit port between the two markers, and then followed nicely the course of the LAD, suggesting true lumen re-entry. And this is a case in which re-entry can be sometimes very challenging to confirm because there is no good visualization of the distal vessel. And we did intravascular ultrasound to actually confirm that this wire was in a distal true lumen. After confirming, the pilot was changed for a workhorse guide wire, the LAD was predilated, and then uh, stented with a drag eluting stent that was also post dilated at high pressure. Retrospectively, atherectomy might have helped ensure better expansion given the severe calcification, but eventually a Adequate result was achieved with Timothy flow down into the LAD. There was some underexpansion within the LAD stand. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is the presence of severe calcification in this dialysis patient that made uh, wire escalation challenging. The second is the role of ADR in cases like this in which um, there are no retrograde options and undergrade wiring fails. And finally, the triple blind stick and swap technique, essentially what this means is that we are using the Stingray balloon. We are puncturing on both exit ports of the Stingray balloon and then inserting a polymer jacketed guide wire without any injection to visualize the distal true lumen, which in our case would not have been successful anyway due to poor collateral circulation. 
So the triple blind stick and swap technique was very useful here to allow us to re-enter the Twitter True Lumen and achieve a successful recanalization of the CTO. Thank you.